I can't remember whether it was a talk in chapel one day or a sermon on a Sunday morning when a professor from the seminary read from Paul's letter to the Romans, the passage from the fifth chapter where Paul says, but God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I smiled to myself as I settled back to listen to what would be an exposition on justification, salvation, maybe even reconciliation. Then this wise and gentle prof began to speak about the importance of the word but. Imagine that. Like the music teacher who once told me that the hardest lesson for a student to learn is to pay attention to the pauses in the score, as much as all the notes. We listeners were being reminded to pay attention to the little words, those that seem insignificant in well-known passages, those whose only purpose is to introduce an important point or train of thought. Like missing the poses in music and messing up the music, if we ignore the little words, we might mess up the gospel. Surely is one of those words we ignore at our peril. It is a word that seems crucial in our Advent journey to the birth in Bethlehem. Surely, says Jeremiah, the days are coming and we are so wrapped up in the where's and when's of those days, we miss out on what Jeremiah is saying. Surely, Mary says, folks centuries from now will call me blessed. And we get into debates about the virgin birth. Surely God is my salvation, says Isaiah, and we get arguing about whether there is only one way to God. Surely it is such a small word, an insignificant word, a pause we can take to catch breath while reading scripture. And while we catch that breath, we miss the confident assurance that a prophet has that the destruction of his city, his faith, his world, has no power to thwart God's intentions for him and the folks around him. When we step over this small word to try to keep up with the big theological question of salvation, we seem to get off the path of trust that Isaiah is pointing that Isaiah is pointing to for everyone who pays attention. When we think Mary's virginity matters more than the word she shares about the great reversal God has promised, well, we haven't listened very well, surely. This tiny word speaks volumes of trust, of confidence, of faith, of assurance that God is active in our lives and the events of the world in the years that have passed, are now and will come. Surely God's justice for all, everywhere, will not be thwarted by all those isms that we are so good at creating and following. It may be delayed, but will not be thwarted. Surely, God's grace is wrapped around us as gently and lovingly as those bands of cloths which encircle Jesus at his birth. Surely, God's love will outlast all hate, will mend all brokenness, will gather up the lonely and forgotten and bring them home and will dispel evil as it moves towards those days that are coming. Surely God's breath is as close to us as a baby cradled in our arms, a lover sleeping, in, sleeping next to us at night, in the silly jokes of kids, in the songs of angels, in the fading voices of our elders telling us not to give up. Surely God's presence is always with us as we pace hospital corridors and sit by hospital bed, hospice beds as we drive to pick up a child in college and stand with them in their fears, as we stand by gravesides and when we come to the end of our time on this side of life. Surely.